well. So here I am driving the Kia Sonnet. This, of course, is the updated version of the car. In today's video, I'm going to give you some positives and talk about maybe a few negatives as well. But we'll start off with the negatives first because uh, if I start with the positive, then you'll say I'm trying to be a Kia salesman and trying to push this car sales onto you. So we'll start with some negatives first. <music> Uh, now the first big negative on this car is the fact that uh, yes the space in the back seat the rear seat space is a little crap it's still a little tight and it's not as good as some of its rivals the Brezza the Nexon still offer you a little more space and that means that if you're planning to go on a long distance journey with your entire friends uh, maybe five friends are there then you'll have to ask one of them to maybe stay home or maybe take another uh, bus or something else because uh, having five in this car will really make the cabin feel very packed so four at best or maybe even three is ideal uh, especially because uh, the back seat doesn't offer you the same kind of space as some of the rivals so that's one big uh, area of weakness for the Kia Sonnet now the second big negative is the fact that the suspension of this car is on the stiffer side yes uh, Kia has uh, made the suspension of this car slightly uh, stiff uh, which is great news for people who drive a lot of the highways because on the highways this car feels rock solid and offers you a great sense of confidence but the downside is that when you drive this car within city limits when you're maneuvering over those badly passed roads when you're maneuvering this car over those uh, rumble strips then some of those potholes and some of those patchy roads can just filter into the cabin so it's a positive for highway use but a bit of negative for people who drive on a daily basis within the city limits so the stiff suspension is uh, not really very good especially when you compare this car with its rivals like the venue like the Brezza and of course like the Nexon and the suspension of this car does seem quite uh, stiff so those are two big negatives the third big negative is the fact that uh, the top of the line versions of this car the top end versions feel a little overpriced feel a little expensive especially this one that I'm driving the automatic diesel it definitely uh, feels a little expensive uh, but to be honest, there isn't any other automatic diesel with uh, a torque converter gearbox available in the market uh, at the moment in its rivals. So that is, you know, what you have to pay for getting better technology as well as getting access to an automatic along with a diesel engine. So these are three big areas uh, of weakness on the Kia Sonnet, but there are lots of positives. So sit back and relax because uh, this part of the video will be a little long. Now the first big positive is the fact that the car looks really very good on the outside. In fact, when uh, the driver came to drop this car at my place and he was parking it, I could only see the back side. I felt like by mistake, they have sent me the Kia Seltos. Yes, I actually felt that uh, it does look uh, just as good and just as big from a distance as a Kia Seltos does. Uh, now that uh, would be something which could be excused if you're not an expert or maybe you don't drive cars every day. But for someone like me, to actually say that this car looks like a cell toss from a distance was something which you know i had to really apologize to the driver because i did tell him why you bring the cell toss and he said no it's not the cell toss the sonnet so it really looks good it looks bigger than it is and it looks very sharp and everybody in my neighborhood actually came up to me and said that this is really good looking car so that's a very big positive when this car is standing in your driveway standing maybe in your parking slot then you will have a sense of pride when you watch it and see it because it really uh, looks so good from all angles front end back end side angle everything is quite good and well balanced so that's one big area of positivity the second big uh, positive of course is the fact that this car uh, has all the bells and whistles it has all the kit uh, it feels very premium very plush inside cool front seats uh, it has you know both sound system really it feels very good very premium and all the, the switches all the materials they also offer you very good uh, sense of uh, touch and feel because they really are made from soft plastics so it also has that sense of you know being a high quality car and that also gives you a sense of uh, plushness inside the cabin so that's another positive rich features list along of course with the fact that uh, you get such a nice and plush cabin and such a nice and plush interior is another big positive on the Kia Sonnet. Now the third big positive is the fact that the boot of this car really is massive. It's the biggest boot on any compact SUV. 
Yes, you might say that, you know, there's a bit of a compromise in terms of the space in the back seat. And you're right, there is. But when it comes to boot space, there's no compromise on uh, the Kia Sorna. It really is huge and very massive. And that also means that, you know, if you're traveling on long distance journeys, maybe with your wife and two kids, then no issues whatsoever in terms of uh, hauling in all your luggage, all your equipment and, you know, uh, going off for that weekend getaway onto the hills. So that's also a major area of positivity. The fourth big positive is the fact that uh, the overall features list is good, but you also get a very good variance uh, list. Yes, the variance uh, options on this car is humongous and you might get confused because uh, there's a turbo petrol, uh, there's a diesel, there is a non-turbo petrol, there are manuals, there are automatics, there are IMTs, basically clutchless uh, manuals. So really, this car has it all and uh, you know, if you want a car with sunroof, you can buy that. If you want the base version, you can buy that. So it has a very extensive variance list and that also adds to the overall uh, buyer satisfaction because you can choose what kind of variant you want and what you want in your car and how much budget you want to spend. So all the permutation and combination options are available, uh, which is again, a very positive thing. And of course, uh, the fifth reason why I should consider buying it is simply because of the excellent turbo petrol engine and of course the fuel efficiency of the diesel yes so the turbo petrol is the one to go for if you are a keen driver if you're enthusiast and of course the diesel is the one to go for if you drive a lot maybe 100 or 110 kilometers on a very regular basis on a daily basis then the diesel is the one to go for as i said before this combination of a torque converter gearbox and this diesel engine isn't available on any other car in the compact suv space so that's also quite a big positive that you get might be a little expensive but then again you get the best features list and the best interior quality which more than makes up for uh, the slightly expensive sticker price on this car and of course as they say all good things uh, come at a price and this one of course is quite a good and very well sorted out package so these are my positives and negatives uh, of the kia sonnet 2024 Huddle. If you have enjoyed watching this video, do let me know uh, what you think. And in case you think I missed out a few positive, or maybe a few negative points, then you can let me know in the comments section below because I might have missed out one or two things which you might feel are important. So do let me know about some points which I might have missed out. And please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so till now. And do follow us on all our social media platforms as well. Uh, it's bye for now. And thanks so much for watching. And before I forget, always remember to belt up whether you're sitting in the front or at the back.